The world's largest passenger aircraft, the A380, is one of the greatest feats of engineering of our time. The double-decker quad jet, which carries 555 passengers, is the embodiment of luxury in the skies, fitted with a lounge bar, salon, and even a duty-free store on board, depending on the airline. But in order to meet growing demand for flying, will Airbus take this massive aircraft to the next level? That is to say, will there ever be a triple-decker commercial aircraft? Technically speaking, even the 747 and the A380 are triple-deckers if we count the cargo deck, which can be modified to fit passengers. Some airlines have suggested utilizing some of the cargo space to create luxurious spaces for first-class passengers, such as gyms, spas, and bunk beds. But for the purpose of this video, we'll focus on actual triple-decker aircraft with three floors specifically designed to accommodate passenger seating. Designing and building such an aircraft, a super jumbo jet, if you will, is relatively not too complex. Put it simply, just enlarge the aircraft and expand the space within to create a middle deck. Because of the sheer size of the super jumbo, which we'll call the A390 following the numerical progression of aircraft names, it requires the combined resources of both Boeing and Airbus to merely engineer a prototype. The closest we've ever gotten to this was actually way back in 1996, when Lockheed Martin designed a plane that would redefine wide body itself. It was planned to carry up to 900 passengers across two decks, which is more than two 777s combined. But unlike a 777, it would seat 17 passengers per row in a 34343 configuration with four aisles. The aircraft was given a very creative name, the Very Large Subsonic Transport or VLST for short. But the acronym is far from the biggest challenge holding the VLST back. Airports would have had to be completely rebuilt because runways simply weren't wide enough to accommodate such a massive plane, and gates couldn't handle that many passengers at a time. Not to mention longer delays for flights coming after, because it takes a pretty long time to load and unload nearly a thousand passengers and all their luggage. Even if airports are completely redesigned to accommodate larger planes in a more efficient manner, there's still the small issue that the A390 just might not be profitable for airlines. When Airbus first launched the A380 in 2007, they expected it to revolutionize the aviation industry. Their fiercest rival Boeing had even planned a longer version of the 777X known as the 77710, in case the A380 took off, pun intended. However, just 14 years later, following a series of cancellations from major airlines around the world, including its largest operator Emirates, the A380 officially ended production in 2021. But why? There has been speculation that the cause for the A380's demise could have to do with the preference for point-to-point -point routes over the traditional hub-and-spoke model. In order to fill up the aircraft with enough passengers, instead of offering a direct non-stop flight from, say, Detroit to Dubai, Emirates flies from New York, where passengers across the Midwest and Northeast can connect for their flight to Dubai. But given the choice, any sane passenger would prefer to fly non-stop. This resulted in the creation of smaller and medium-sized aircraft that could cover the same distance but were easier to fill up with passengers, such as the 767, A330, 787 Dreamliner, and the A321 XLR, in the hopes of offering a more convenient direct flight for passengers. However, the seemingly good alternative has its flaws. For starters, passenger demand is much less for point-to-point -point routes, so flights will be operated less frequently, which will result in more expensive tickets. Naturally, due to supply and demand, a seat on the A380 would be cheaper because there's more than 500 of them. Therefore, the downfall of the A380 is not because of the hub-and-spoke model. Instead, according to a former Airbus salesperson, there are two main reasons for the fall of Airbus's largest aircraft the first and foremost being its engines. Just three years after the A380 began development, engines became a lot more efficient. I'm talking 12% more efficient in an industry where 0.5% more efficiency can make or break. Basically, this is referring to how far the aircraft can travel per unit of fuel. So an aircraft like the Dreamliner can fly farther for the same cost per seat thanks to its much more efficient engines. If the A380 was outfitted with these engines, it would have been a lot more profitable. Secondly, Airbus intentionally created the A380-800 with heavier parts than needed, so it can make a lighter version the A380-900 later on, but that never ended up happening. Today, both major aircraft manufacturers have realized that bigger does not always mean better, and have put their resources into creating the most efficient aircraft possible, 
such as Boeing's proposed 797 new mid-size airplane. Does this mean the end of big planes? Not necessarily. While the A390 becoming a reality seems nearly impossible considering the cost and the challenges faced by the A380, one thing is for sure. Demand is rising and will continue to rise in the years and decades to come, and technology is rapidly evolving. While we never really know what the future has in store for us, there could be a better designed and more fuel efficient A380, or quite possibly a commercially viable triple decker plane the likes of which we have never before seen. And that could change the aviation industry forever. If you found this video useful, please hit that subscribe button.